don't let this happen to you. I wrecked my camper and totaled the truck. I made some big mistakes and I'll share what I learned. My name is Liz Amazing. I live full time in my RV while I'm traveling the country and it's my mission to help and inspire others. And okay, I'm going to take a deep breath because this video is not going to be so easy for me to make. There's a part of me that's like, well, I shouldn't make it. I don't want to go back and think about the trauma of wrecking my camper and totaling the truck. But I do believe that this video can really help people. I made some big mistakes and that's another part of my discomfort. I really <laughs> am not super willing to put my great big mistakes out there, but yet I know I learned a lot from those mistakes and I hope that you can too. So the story is my boyfriend at the time and I bought a camper. We bought a bumper camper. It was about probably 22 feet long and three hours into our three week vacation, I was driving and I totaled it. I totaled the truck, I totaled the camper, it was really bad. And I've, I feel so lucky to be alive from it. It could have been so much worse. We could have fallen down this drop off and died. We had our dogs with us, Mango was there. And so I'm grateful that I walked away with just a broken wrist. And the accident itself, was traumatic, but the aftermath was really traumatic too. I felt bad for wrecking my boyfriend's truck. I felt scared to drive anything. In fact, I didn't drive at all for 10 days. I was working full time as a wedding photographer and I had a wedding in a couple weeks and a broken wrist and it was my brother's wedding. So I definitely wanted to be there for that. And then the worst part of it was sifting through all the crap. The inside of that camper was just turned upside down and was just a total mess. But it was full of all this stuff that we had for our three week trip, including lots of things that were brand new that we had to get out of there. But the fridge had opened, so salsa and eggs coated everything. So if going through the accident wasn't bad enough, the next day having to sift through and pull our stuff out from the egg and salsa and other mess was really heartbreaking. So hopefully you will never have to go through what I went through. As I go through the list of mistakes at the very end, I'm going to share the biggest mistake of all that would have changed everything. So here we go. I'm going to take another deep breath. So this camper was new to us. We had driven to Texas from Kentucky to get it. And I had only driven the camper one time before I drove it the time of the wreck. So my first mistake was a typical woman thing, and I'm kind of embarrassed to admit this, but I bought this camper with my boyfriend at the time, and I assumed he had it all under control. I assumed he understood the way the hitch worked and the trailer brakes, and so I just figured he, that he knew. And I was wrong. He didn't have a clue either. So my first tip is don't assume your partner knows. Take responsibility for your own safety. Mistake number two was even though this was my fourth camper, it was my first towable. I didn't know anything about towing, hitching, and I certainly was not used to driving a towable. I had driven it a little bit on the way back from buying it, but then the second time I drove it was when I got into the accident. My mistake was not taking it out and driving and practicing it. So tip number two is when you get a new camper, whether it's a towable or not, you want to take it to a parking lot, neighborhood streets, and really get comfortable with it before you take it on a road trip. Mistake number three was we had an agenda. This was one of our biggest mistakes. Like so many campers packing to leave for a big trip, we left the house far later than we intended. But we wanted to get to this camping world that was out of state and buy some gizmo. So we were bound and determined to just keep going and to drive through the night so we could get where we wanted to get. That was such a bad mistake. So tip number three is expect to leave late and train yourself not to care. Lose the agenda. And that was what led to mistake number four. We were driving in the dark. That's a huge mistake and I never drive in the dark anymore. Of course, it was an unfamiliar camper, unfamiliar roads. We were actually driving in the mountains. So tip number four, don't drive in the dark, especially if it's unfamiliar territory. 
Mistake number five was I did not know that the trailer was heavier than the truck towing it. This was important information to me that became crucial at the time of the accident. So tip number five is know the weight of your camper and understand how it relates to your tow vehicle. Mistake number six was I was not aware that I was driving downhill. There was a five mile long downhill in the mountains. It was kind of gradual and it was so dark I just was not aware. So tip number six is be aware of your surroundings, particularly hills when driving a trailer. Tip number seven is another doozy. Oh my goodness. I did not understand how the trailer brakes worked and neither did my boyfriend. I swear I want to reach back in time and give myself a shake because I had no idea how they worked. If you're towing a vehicle, by gosh, it's your responsibility to understand how trailer brakes worked. For example, I did not know that if I lightly touched the pedal on the truck, that the trailer brakes would engage first before the truck brakes. And second, I could have reached down and touched the trailer brake system and braked just the trailer. So tip number seven, know how your trailer brake system works. Well, before I share the biggest mistake that would have changed everything, let me tell you about the accident. All the tips that I've shared with you up until now have created a perfect storm. And so I'm sure you can see the scene. It's dark. We're going downhill, but I don't know it. I don't know the trailer's heavier than the truck. And I don't know how to use the trailer brakes. So what happens is the trailer starts to fishtail. The first thing I do is I let go of the accelerator. I think that we're, that we're driving level, so I think we're going to slow down. I don't realize that the trailer is actually pushing the truck downhill. We're actually increasing speed. I turn to my boyfriend. I'm like, what do I do? I'm afraid to touch the brakes because I think the truck brakes are going to engage along with the trailer brakes and that that's going to put us into a spin or that we're going to jackknife. Meanwhile, the fishtailing is getting worse as we're actually increasing speed and my boyfriend doesn't know what to do. And so it goes from fishtailing to it starts to rock. The next thing you know, the camper turns totally on its side. And remember, we are on the interstate and it now spins and it spins a couple times and the front of the truck slams into the guardrail. That guardrail saved our lives. We both could see over the edge and we could see it was a total drop off. In fact, we broke several posts to the guardrail. It really was awful. We were so lucky that someone didn't slam into us because again, it was the interstate. We actually, with our wreck, we closed the interstate for three hours. It was truly awful, but yet we were so, so lucky to walk away with just a broken wrist. So now we get to our biggest mistake. If we hadn't have made this mistake, we could have avoided the whole thing. But first I want to make clear that I actually don't regret the accident. Yes, it was traumatic. It's really hard for me to talk about it, think about it, to look at the pictures, but yet that accident has made me a better camper in so many ways. Number one, I take responsibility for learning everything about my camper. I take responsibility for my safety. I don't take risks. I'm not driving at night. I'm not speeding and I've really done everything I can to be safe. And the other thing is, I don't drive a travel trailer, a bumper trailer, and that accident is the reason. Do you know that travel trailers are, out of all the different types of campers, they are the most likely to get into an accident. Going downhill is one way because you can quickly get going too fast and fishtail, but that's not the only way. This type of camper is more susceptible to side winds. So if you're driving, particularly out west where there's a lot of high winds, that could cause you to fishtail and wreck. But not just that, when a big truck passes you, you can really feel that wind and that could also cause you to lose control. So that is really important thing to be aware of. And so here's the biggest mistake of all was that we found out later that that camper was recalled as being unsafe to drive and being likely to fishtail. So tip number eight, whether you buy a new or used camper, check the recall list. 
What wrecks or close calls have you had? Share in the comments. And if you want to be part of a community where we help support and inspire each other to live amazing, then join the A-Team. And if you liked this video, you'll love the next one where I talk about the pros and cons of the different types of campers. See you in the next video.